name's Christina, for those who don't know me. Um, I've been going to Anthem Church for about two years now. Um, and I'm grateful that I grew up um, knowing Jesus and knowing God at a young age. I grew up in Washington, and um, I had a few years in Florida, but mostly I've been in Washington my whole life and grew up going to church. And um, yeah, at a young age, I had a basic understanding of who God was and who Jesus was and what Jesus did for dying on the cross for our sins. But it wasn't until sixth grade that it became personal. I just thought Jesus was a real man who died for sinners, but I didn't realize that it was personal, that it was like my sins and my things that I did that put Jesus there as well. Um, so that was a key point in my life. Another one was 10th grade in the middle of high school. Um, I decided that, like, what are the practical implications of believing the gospel? It's not just something I believe and then it doesn't change how I live. So 10th grade was when I decided to get baptized and I really wanted to become a follower of Jesus, um, not just believe something and my actions don't follow. Um, so I think from then on, I remember serving in the church in a lot of capacities, like helping with kids camps at church, helping with greet team and helping it with kids on Sundays. Um, I did a lot of service trips, was really involved with the youth group and I really enjoyed that time. Um, I think looking back, um, they all stem from good intentions of wanting to live out my faith, but I think at some point it became a it turned from like an outpouring of believing Jesus and wanting to trust him and follow him to almost an obligation and just like doing these things to earn God's love. So I think that was like something that I learned that like it can start out with good intentions, but then it becomes selfish and almost like I have to do this for God to love me. Um, so that was something I learned. Another thing was when I went to college, I went to WCU, go Cougs, anyone out there? <laughs> um, it's about a five hour car drive from here and it's basically in Idaho, so land of the potatoes. Um, <laughs> I wanted to get like, I wanted to be close but far enough away from my parents and I think um, I wanted to experience life for myself, not just under like my parents' ways of growing, growing up and teaching me how to live life and um, I studied mechanical engineering. It's really tough for school, but I remember freshman year was like the worst year of um, depression and anxiety and like hardship I think I've had in my life. That was a pretty rough time. And I think looking back, it was a direct result from turning away from God and trying to live life on my own um, and live by what the world says is good. I don't know if you all have heard the term FOMO. Uh, it stands for fear of missing out. And I think that's what I had, to be honest, growing up in church, I felt like, like, okay, this seems like a good way to live, but am I actually missing out on anything? Like, what have my parents not told me <laughs> is out there? Um, so I think that was like why when I went to school and I was far away and I had no one to tell me what to do, I tried to make friends by joining a sorority, I went to parties, I drank underage, and I realized that my life apart from God is not worth it, even if that means I gained the world. Um, and yeah, I, that was like a tough lesson to learn, but a very important one. Um, and another thing that helped me with that transition um, was my summer in Slovenia. And that was when I helped out in English camp and I was a summer intern for 12 weeks. Um, helped out with the English camp and the youth group and helped organize events. And also my main role was to connect non-Christians who went to the camp to Christians who were there in the youth group in Slovenia. And um, I remember there was one person I met specifically who was um, going to the youth group there and her parents had disowned her because she was a Christian and she had like no help, no financial support and she was my age, um, living life on her own. But that was a consequence of her following Jesus was that her parents did not support her. Um, and I remember just being like blown away by her faith and blown away by her lack of anxiety about the future and like trusting God fully and having, she got everything she needed because of church members supporting her and things like that. Um, but that's when I realized like, 
there is a price to following Jesus, and it's worth it. Um, I saw people accept Christ that summer, and it was just such a, like a pivotal point in my life, and I think that did change the trajectory of my life. Uh, came back really on fire for God, and I stopped partying. I stopped doing things that weren't life-giving. I got plugged into a Bible study, um, a Christian ministry group. I shared the gospel with people. I started a Bible study in the sorority. Some people reacted hostilely. Some were welcomed, um, were welcoming. I grew in my ability to share the gospel, and I got opportunities to disciple people. And I think that was a really life-growing experience. Um, and then spring 2020 comes. COVID happens. Um, that's when I graduate college. It's um, pretty rough to be isolated, but I'm grateful for God's provision in leading me to a job at Microsoft full time. Um, a lot of people I know had their jobs recently, so I was really grateful for that. And um, started going to Anthem Church shortly after, and that was been really cool to learn how to serve in new capacities. Um, if you ever see me, I'm usually in the corner helping with tech. <laughs> so um, that's been really fun to learn. And um, if anyone wants to help learn as well, um, Ask me, <laughs> I can help. Um, but yeah, I think right now I'm in a season of like three years into being a working professional, trying to figure out what life looks like after college and um, like where I wanna live, just everything that life is in, in store for me. And um, we've had a lot of recent layoffs on my team. Um, over 30% of our team has been laid off um, in the past week, which has been a struggle and there could be more, so I think Right now, I'm kind of in a season of like, the future is unknown. Um, trying not to have anxiety about it because it's outside of my control, but um, I have a few verses that I've leaned to in this, I don't know what the future holds um, season. One is like a lifelong favorite verse from when I was in third grade that still has been my like life's verse. It's Proverbs 3, five through six. Uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight um, I liked it in third grade but I still like there's nuances to it today of like trust trust in God first um, and then he will make things work out how they should to glorify him um, and then the other one is Proverbs 633 but I'll read the section before it because it has to do um, kind of with like what I've been dealing with is like just fear of the future. Um, it says, can any of you add one moment of his life by worry? And why do you worry about clothes? Observe how the, the wild flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin thread. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was adorned like one of these. If that's how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and thrown away into the furnace tomorrow, won't he do much more for you? you have little faith. So do not say, so do not worry saying, what will we eat or what will we drink or what will we wear? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things and your, fa and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be provided for you. Um, so yeah, I really like that because it's like, no matter what happens, no matter how much you worry, like some of it's outside of our control, some of it is, in our control, but like focus on what you can control and seek God and his kingdom first. And then like God will open and close doors if they need be. And yeah, life has its way of working things out. Um, and yeah, that's a little bit about my testimony, my story. Thanks.